In this video, we're going to take a look at solving linear systems in three variables. First of all, remember that if we have a system of equations or uh, equation with three variables, in order to solve that, we need three of those equations. So we get into a situation like this, and the first thing that we want to do is come up with a plan. We're going to use elimination in order to get rid of one of the variables. And my suggestion to you is to look for a variable that has a coefficient of 1 because it's easy to multiply through by something in order to get that to be an opposite. And if we get those opposites, then we're able to add and combine those two equations to get one that only has two variables. And then we'll take it from there. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got going here and see if we can't come up with a plan. Well, I notice that this z has a coefficient of 1, and there's also a z here with a coefficient of 1. That's negative 1. So I can easily make the z's be opposites of each other by simply multiplying through this equation by 4, and that will make this 4z. Then I'll have opposites right there. And if I combine the first equation and the third equation, then I'll have opposites in the z's, and then I'll have two equations with just x's and y's. So I want to represent this plan that I'm going to execute by lettering each of my equations. And then I'm going to write down what my plan is. Now, there are a lot of operations that are going to take place in order to solve a system like this. So the more organized we can be with our work, the easier it will be if something doesn't turn out exactly right. Okay, If we make an error somewhere, if we have our work organized, it'll be much easier to determine where exactly that error occurred. So, as we talked about already, I'm going to take this top equation, equation A, and I'm going to multiply it through by 4. So I'm going to say 4 times A plus B. Okay, that's my first combination. I'm going to multiply through by 4. That's going to make this 4z and minus 4z. So the z's will cancel. Then my second combination, I have z's that are opposites already in a and c. So this second combination needs to include this equation. And I could combine it with either of these. But since the z's are already opposites, all I have to do is add those together. So this second combination is going to be a plus c. Let me clean that up just a little bit there. a plus c. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and execute the plan. This first one said 4 times a. Alright, so here's my equation a. I'm going to multiply through everything by 4. So 4 times 3x gives me, I'm going to switch colors so we can see this a little bit better. 4 times 3x is 12x plus 4 times 3y is 12y and then plus 4z. And then finally, 4 times the negative 3 is negative 12. Make sure you multiply that by every single term in that equation. Then I'm going to add to it equation B, and I don't have to do anything with equation B. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it down here. So minus 3y minus 4z, and that's equal to negative 5. Okay, now notice I have opposites in my z term, so this is looking good, exactly what I want. And I'm going to now add vertically. So 12x plus 2x is 14x. Then here we have 12y minus 3y is plus 9y. The z's are gone, and that's equal to negative 17. Okay, now I'm going to execute my plan on this second one. And here we just said we're going to take equation A plus equation C. So just bring them down. Let's quickly rewrite those there equals negative 3, and then 5x plus 4y minus z equals 10. 
Okay. Notice again the z's are opposites. We want to get rid of the same variable. Okay. So if you get rid of the z's in your first combination, make sure you get rid of them in the second. We could get rid of the x's, we could get rid of the y's, but the key is that we have to get rid of the same variable in both of our pairs. Now, we go ahead and we're going to add vertically again. So we have 8x plus <coughs> excuse me, 7y and then we've got z's there, those are gone, equals 7. Now, I'm going to call this equation d, and I'm going to call this equation e. Now, we've got a system of two equations, and we can solve that. You could solve it using substitution, or you can solve it using elimination. I'm going to choose elimination because I've got these larger numbers here and there's no variable that would be easy to solve for. So, let's take a look at the x's and y's and what I could multiply through by in order to get it so that one of those is going to cancel out. Well, let's see. Hmm, 14 and 8. Huh. Might have to work pretty hard to get those to be opposites. The 9y and the 7y, well, if I multiply this one through by negative 7, I'm going to have 14x. This is going to become negative 63. If I multiply this one through by 9, I'll have positive 63y there. So that seems like a good plan. So let's jot that down. Okay, We're going to take equation d. We're going to multiply it through by negative 7. So negative 7d, then I'm going to add it to... I'm going to multiply this equation through by 9, 9e, like so. Okay, So then, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So grab my equation d, and I'm going to multiply through by negative 7 on that one. So we have uh, negative 7 times 14, which is, let me grab my calculator here. I shouldn't need a calculator for that, but I just want to be sure. Oopsie. Negative 7 times 14. Going to give me negative 98. Ooh. Okay. Negative 98x. Then negative 7 times 9y is that negative 63y that I mentioned earlier that we were going for. And then we've got 17, negative 17, excuse me, times negative 7. It's going to give me positive 119. Okay, so then my plan is to multiply through equation E by 9. So 9 times 8, 72x. The 9 times 7y is plus 63y. And then 9 times 7 63. Now, notice we have those opposites here, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to add these vertically. So I have negative 98 plus 72. Again, just adding vertically. So we do that, and we get negative 26x. The y's cancel out, and that's equal to 119 plus 63 which is 182. Now, notice what we have. We have one equation with one variable. Perfect. Now we can solve for that variable. So let's just take this equation. We'll divide by negative 26 on both sides. And when we do that, we end up with x being equal to 7. All right, so now we've got one of our variables solved for. Now it's a matter of working backwards. We're going to take that 7 and we're going to plug it into either equation D or E. This one looks like a little smaller number, so I'm going to put it into equation E. And I'm going to denote that by just saying a little arrow like that. We're putting that into equation E. So 7 going in here for x. So it's 8 times 7 plus 7y equals 7. That would be 56 plus 7y equals 7. Then, oops, I don't want to divide there. Holy cow. I'm going to subtract 56 
Subtract 56, we end up with 7y equals negative 49. Then finally divide by 7, divide by 7, we end up with y equals negative 7. Okay, now I've got x and y solved for, so I just need to find that z. So we're going to take the x and y back, and we're going to go to our original set of equations. And I'm going to be able to solve for z. So this one has z all by itself already, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the x and y into that one. So let's go ahead and say into equation a, I'm going to put, 3 times x, which is 3 times 7, plus 3 times y, which we found to be negative 7, then plus z equals negative 3. Okay, well, we have 21 minus 21 plus z equals negative 3, then finally 21 minus 21 is 0, so we have z equals negative 3. So there is our ordered triple, x, y, z. It is 7, negative 7, negative 3. Now, to check this, we can go ahead and fill all of those into here and double check that it works. And we just worked with that one, putting in those three. So if I put in negative 3 for z, sure enough, it would be negative 3 equals negative 3. I could do similar things for b and c just to double check and make sure that it works. Then there's our solution. So solving linear systems in three variables. First thing, I would strongly recommend organizing your work and using a notation like this so that if something doesn't turn out right, notice there were a lot of operations going on here. If something doesn't turn out right, if you lose a negative or whatever, it's a lot easier to check back when you have written out your plan like this so that you can check and see, oh, what equation was that? It can be much more challenging if you don't have that organized. Then we want to take two combinations. So in this case, we took A and B. We did a little something to A and then combined it with B. And then we were able to combine A and C to get rid of one of the three variables. At that point, we had two equations with two variables, which we know how to solve using elimination, or sometimes you can use substitution. In this case, we figured out how we could eliminate the y's. Once we did that, we were able to solve for x. Then it became a matter of working backwards. And we go back to our equations d or e, pop in the x in this case, then solve for y, boom, put those two things back into one of our original equations, and off we go. Now, you don't always have to solve the variables in these situations. Maybe different variables. You might come out with a z first, and then get the x, then get the y. That doesn't matter. The key is that you're getting those opposites to eliminate those things. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.